Okay, so casuals guide for UFC 301 uh, taking place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil tonight. This one is taking a bit of flack. A lot of people have said it's not a it's, it's a fight night, a glorified fight night. I, I can see that with the main event, but actually, look, you've got the return of Jose Aldo. That's pretty sweet. Anthony Smith against Vitor Petrino. That's pretty sweet. Michelle Pereira versus Ihor Pateria. That's pretty sweet. Uh, then you've got blonde Paul Craig against Xiao Boralho. That's going to be a real nice fight. There's some there's some good fights to be had on this one. So I'm going to be breaking this event down fight by fight, every fighter, every fight. Uh, just a little bit of information on each one and probably some fun nicknames in there as well. And uh, I'll try and keep it under 15 to 20 minutes. That is what the casuals guide is all about. Just to give you a bit more information on every fight so that you enjoy the event more when you watch it. Uh, although a lot of people are boycotting this one. Although, you know, in England, it's included on BT Sport. So why wouldn't you watch it the next game the day in the morning, the next day in the morning, <laughs> frankly? Anyway, let's get cracking. Uh Uh, Alessandro Costa, uh, nickname Nono, against uh, Kevin Borjas. A uh, couple of problematic sounding nicknames in this one because you've got Nono, which I believe just means the grandfather. So I don't know why that's his nickname. And then you've got uh, Kevin Borjas, who is called El Gallo El Negro. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if we're allowed to say that. Um, it's okay, guys. I did. I did Google Translate it. It means the Black Rooster. So we're fine. We're fine. And after all that research, I'm going to take the rooster by knockout. Oh, I'm kidding. I have looked at it. He's got eight, 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 eight out of nine wins by knockout. So I'm not going to overthink this one too much. I'm taking the rooster by knockout. Uh, Ismail Bonfim takes on Vince Pichel at 155. Uh, this one, you've got Bonfim. Look, he's a bit of a stud. He's called Moretta, which I believe means hammer. Uh, it is a good name because he does swing hard. Uh, Pichel, he trained by Big John McCarthy uh, or went to his training academy or something like that. God knows. Anyway, he knows how to get a car started. He worked for AAA. Uh, he's also a qualified electrician. He's He's got a lot of um, feathers to his cap, honestly. Great moustaches as well. Uh, he has beat some good people. He's beaten Jim Miller, Roosevelt Roberts. He largely keeps it standing. Uh, he's a little bit underrated, honestly. People don't tend to see him coming um and they say watch him you know when he's in the shower or whatever uh, <laughs> anyway, i'm gonna take i'm gonna take Vince michelle here i think decision or knockout in that one i think he's just gonna be a bit too big bit too physical uh then you've got dion barbosa against uh ernesta karakati uh dion is no relation to edson as far as i can tell uh great arm bar on dana white's contender series uh her nickname is uh, the witch or the blue heart I guess. Uh, she's very grapple heavy. Uh, Carol Katie, uh, she's heavy handed. Uh, that's what her nickname is. I don't know if that's a good nickname because she only has two knockouts. Um, I'm going to take Barbosa by submission in that one. No problem. Uh, then you've got Mauricio Orofi against Jamie Malarkey. I said that in that accent because Jamie Malarkey is from Australia, you see. And then you get it all here on the Burt Locker. So you've got Ruffy with five, with nine wins, nine knockouts, all on the regionals and on the Dana White's Contender Series. Look, he's clearly a beast, right? But he's he's been on the regionals. He's fought nobody of the quality of Jamie Malarkey. Malarkey is a tricky, tough Aussie, as I said. He is tough as nails. He's got great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. However, lately he has been getting knocked out rather a lot. So taking on a guy with nine wins and nine knockouts might not be the best strategy, especially uh, that, that monster being a Brazilian and fighting them in Brazil, it, I don't, I don't think it'll go well. I think roughly by knockout in that one or Rufi or however the hell you say it, Rufi. I don't know. Uh, Joaquim Silva against Dracar Close at one fifty five. Uh, Silva, he's quite a complete fighter. He's built like a monster. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and great kickboxing. I think he should have a better record than he does. Frankly, I don't know. He just seems like he doesn't quite live up to what he should be able to do on paper and physically. Look at him. He's first team all body. God damn. Anyway, close. He's a, he's a solid all-rounder. He probably has a slight advantage on the feet here, if anything. I'm going to take close by decision in this one just because I don't trust Silva to turn up. If Silva turns up and fulfills the potential, then he's going to be an absolute monster. But he just very rarely does that. And uh, that was the early prelims. Now we're on to the prelims. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Um, yeah, so Jean Silva versus William Gomez is off. So Gomez collapsed on the scale. Probably no point in breaking that one down. Uh, Elvis Brenner taking on 
Mictibec Oral Buy. Oral Buy. Well, you don't have to be by to give oral, but it probably helps. <sighs> That's awful. Anyway, uh, Elvis Brenner, uh, fairly sure he's one well, of the shooter box guys, isn't he? He trains with Charles Oliveira and Douglas Lima. Anyway, uh, similar style, monstrous submissions. Uh, the striking's good, if a little chaotic. Uh, he catches people on the feet, but that's because they're kind of focused on his submissions. His submissions, that is where his bread is buttered. Now, Oral by uh, he's a monster out of Kyrgyzstan. Honestly, he's a real beast. Um, 12 wins, 11 finishes. He got Uros Medic in a neck crank. And that is so hard to do. At UFC level, to get to actually submit somebody with a neck crank is very difficult. He's made of that Kyrgyzstan steel. It is, is ridiculous. I, I actually like, um, even though Brenner is such a submission expert, I think because he's going to play that game with Oral Bay, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'll find out when they announce him, I guess. Um, Brenner, I, I think he's going to play that game, and I think that Oral Bay is going to submit him. I like, I like the submission there. Uh, probably going to get his arms around that neck, and it's going to be a horrible night. Then you've got Karolina Kowalkiewicz against Ayasmin Lucindo. Uh, ladies, one, two, fivers. Uh, Carolina, she's still going. I can't believe it either, guys. I, I can't believe it either. Since 2022, she's been on a four fight win streak, right? She's actually been really good. She's looked good in every area. Uh, she's almost having a bit of a resurgence here. However, uh, the Sindo is, is pretty monstrous. 15 wins, 11 finishes, eight knockouts. Uh, brilliant Muay Thai kickboxing. She's really, really very strong on the feet, hits with a lot of power. I think that Lucindo puts an end to Kavalkiewicz's resurgence here. I like the knockout in that one. Then you've got Jack Shaw against, uh, oh, Joe Henderson Benito. Mm. Oh, dear. Uh, Jack Shaw, I'm a big fan of his, right? He's a fantastic fighter out of Wales. Uh, he was fighting at Bantamweight, and then he got out-muscled quite badly by Ricky Simone. He's, in fact, gone up a weight class now, uh, where he looked better in his last fight. He's got fantastic grappling. The grappling is what sets him apart. His back takes really are elite. Now, Brito, uh, Tibaro, uh, Shark, uh, yeah, that's a good nickname. Anyway, 16 wins, 14 finishes, 7 knockouts, 7 submissions. He's a monster. Now, this might be a tough night for Jack in Brazil. It really might. Um, th- bear in mind, this is what I want to happen more than anything because I'm just a big fan of Jack Shaw, honestly. You know, he's, he's just very, very good. I'm going to roll the dice on Jack Shaw. I think I'm going to go for the submission because his back takes are elite. Like, do you know what I mean? It is, could be a tough night for him because, it, like, Benito is really good and it is in Brazil. But, yeah, I'm rolling the dice. Jack Shaw by submission. Um, that could be a problem for the accumulator. Anyway, Paul Craig takes on Xiao Baralho on the opening, card, opening fight of the main card. Uh, don't forget, like and subscribe. All that good stuff. Uh, this one is an absolute banger alert, honestly. People were saying there are no good fights. This is a fantastic fight because it's blonde Paul Craig as well. From what I can see, he's dyed his hair blonde. You know, you know, blonde Paul Craig isn't real. He can't hurt you. Well, now look. Look, he's right there. Anyway, um, this is a middleweight fight. Uh, Paul Craig, he's a monster Brazilian jiu-jitsu player out of Scotland, of all places. Uh, his grappling's just incredible, honestly. His striking's somewhat lacking. But he can crack. He can, he can crack, but striking defense is not his thing, It really. Uh, now you've got Baralho. Uh, best thing about what I've seen in this build-up for Baralho, I think he's changed his nickname. His nickname was like the fighting nerd or the nerd or the nerd assassin, something along those lines. Because he was trying to make out, but because he wore these glasses that he's like, oh, oh I'm such a nerd. No, you are a jack built like an absolute monster cage fighter who's clearly... You're not struggling with the lane. Look at the state of you. Do you know what I mean? How he's, oh, I'm such a nerd because I put these glasses on. Piss off, mate. Anyway, he, he corrected that. He's called the natural now. And uh, looking at how jacked he is and the fact that he fights out of Brazil, that I'm assuming that's an ironic nickname. So, yeah, Baralho, look, he's probably got the advantage standing, but only just. Uh, I think Paul Craig's going to be a lot better on the ground. Paul Craig's got such an aggressive grappling style that he, he catches people by surprise. I'm taking Paul Craig by submission. That's what I'm going for in that one. So then you've got Michel Pereira against Ihor Pereira at 185. This is a really, really fun fight. Pereira is very fun to watch. He's got this Capoeira style. He hits from every angle. He has got he hits with a lot of power, and he's just a lot of fun to watch. Now, Pereira is the guy that they fed um, Mauricio Shogun Hua to. And since then, he's just he's not looked great. Like He, he got fed to Carlos Holberg. Oh, Carlos Holberg is a monster, 
But then he lost to um, someone else as well. I think he's he, he won his last fight, so he's back in the win column. But he tends to struggle against large, hard-hitting, long strikers. And, you know, Pereira is all of those things. So I'm going to take Pereira by knockout in that one. Fight of the night, that one, probably, I would say. Then you've got uh, Anthony Smith against Vitor Petrino at 205 pounds. Now, this one's a tough one, really, because uh, Anthony Smith, I'm a huge, huge fan of. I love him on the uh, the Believe You Me podcast. I think he's just he's just a, he's a good fighter. Uh, he's he's very skilled, but he's getting up there now. I don't know how old he is. I think he's forty ish. I don't know. Um, no, he can't be forty. I think he's mid thirties. Either way, look, he's he's got a lot of miles on that fight clock. He really does, and he hasn't looked good since that leg injury. L- let's be fair. Yeah, you know, I'm because I really like Anthony Smith. But he hasn't looked particularly good since that leg injury. Uh, I think it may be a problem. He got lit up against Khalil Roundtree. And now he's going up against another right, elite level striker. Now, Petrino is a savage. He's one of the scariest kickboxers in MMA, not called Pereira. And maybe in the future, we'll be seeing him in exactly the same kind of light. Currently, he's 11 wins, 11 knockouts. No, 11 wins, 7 knockouts. Uh, he's an absolute monster. Watch him target that leg of Smith. He's going to target... Look, unless, uh, unless Anthony Smith gets this to the ground very quickly, and he, he could, you know, Anthony Smith has got elite level grappling. He does. But unless he really g- plays that game, I see no outcome except Petrino attacking the leg early and then knocking Smith out. I do hope I'm wrong, but that's what I'm going for. I'm going for the knockout uh, in favour of Petrino. And then you've got uh, Jonathan Martinez, taking on Jose Aldo. Now, Jose Aldo, we've not seen him since 2022, where he lost to Murad Valish, really. No shame in that, really. The Valish really is unbelievable. Um, he's the king of Rio. It's nice to see him back. It is nice to see him back, but I don't know, I'm not liking this matchup. Because uh, Martinez, the way the way he picked Adrian Yanez apart was absolutely incredible. I actually picked Yanez in that one. I thought Yanez would have the, the edge. I really did. And, and the way that Martinez just lit him up with those low leg kicks and just slick kickboxing. I and I know that Aldo is one of the best kickboxers that we've ever seen, but he's two years removed from his last fight. He's not young. He retired basically. He's having one last outing in Rio de Janeiro and I don't see it going well. I just don't. I think Martinez is going to be too good, too quick, too slick. And I think that we see I think it'll be a decision because Aldo's a tough, tough old, tough old boot, as it were. But yeah, I, I don't see that one going particularly well for for Aldo. But nice to see him back. Nice to see his name on the card again. And then you've got Alessandre Pantoja against Stephen Urcheg. Uh, this one's an interesting one. So look, you've got Pantoja, obviously the new champion, uh, well, newish champion, uh, where he beat Brandon Moreno, looked really good against him. He's a good all rounder. He's got great. He's he's got he he hits with power and he's got good speed and he's also very very strong on the ground. That that as a combination is is just a real problem. Uh, Steven Ersek, he the the reason he's got this fight is because he he got a, an unbelievable knockout over Schnell in his last fight. It was a highlight reel knockout. Would he be getting this fight had he not done that? Um, probably not. Uh, but that uh, and people, are, you know, it, it's it's tempting to say, well, Ersek did that, and now he, he could flatline. Uh, Pantosha. I mean, he does have a, like a slightly reach advantage, but only an inch. Um, but that was his only sec- only a second knockout. It, it's not like he knocks out everybody in front of him like that. He just it just doesn't. It, I'm, no disrespect, but that's just not what. Ma- maybe he's turned a corner. Maybe he's found something that that will allow him to do this going forward. But you know, until I see him repeat that, I can't put money on that. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think Pantoja, I, I like Pantoja in this one. I like the submission. I think that if it goes to the ground, Pantoja is going to be so much stronger, so much more physical. And that's where I see it going. I, I see Pantoja getting a neck. I see him getting a submission. And that is what I'm going for. So that is the casual guide for UFC 301. Uh, obviously, like and subscribe. Do all that good stuff. I'll be doing some a couple more videos, just doing some real terrible bets. Give us some terrible bets to be had on this one. And until next time, keep the odds long and the bets terrible.